time to build the 16 music box. So it's supposed to give you 16 different uh, music things out of it uh, with four controls. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll give you the theory first and then near the end I'll show uh, the wiring of it all up and I'll be fast forwarding through there at two or three times the normal speed. So it uses a CD4011, which is a NAND gates for them. And it uses a CD4066, which is a basically switch. I'll put the two up here uh, for the pinout. But what I've done is I've converted the schematic more into something that might be more representative, easier to figure out. So you start off with 9561, uh, which is basically a blob, standard blob chip right in there. But it's advertised as a four music uh, chip. And this part's pretty straightforward. That's the output. But, okay, how do you get f uh, 16 out of 4? Well, they're a bit crafty on this one. The A and the B actually control um, the oscillator. The C and the D control um, which of the four music things is going to be uh, playing. So, here we go. We'll start with uh, music. The CD, if uh, they're both low, essentially it uh, gives a high to uh, F1 and a high to F2. And that produces uh, this sound effect. Then if you have, um, well, low and high, uh, F1 is high, F2 is low, you get the fire truck, the next one is the ambulance, and the next one is the police car. Now, this thing isn't exactly to what they specify. Um, for the first one, all you need is F2 high, and it doesn't care about the first one. Uh, for the fire truck, F1 has to be high, and F2 is actually supposed to be either not connected or low. So that one works too. The ambulance is low, low. The specifications, though, are low for F1, not connected for F2. Okay, I guess it still works. And for the police car one, not connected, not connected. So it's still kind of working. And you do get four different sounds coming out of it some of the time so that's basically how this one works so if both c and d are high then this is a and so this is um comes out as uh from the and part would be one but since it's a not it turns to zero so this switch is left open and hence f1 is not connected for all the other ones, um, this the AND part would be zero, but it's knotted, and then the, uh, this switch would be on. And then these two just control the other ones. Okay, so how do you get more different sounds out of it? Well, you just change the oscillator frequency. And to do that, you change the resistance over here. So when you have a low, low for A and B, that outputs a high here that uh, closes the switch, which bypasses this resistor. Since both of these are having lows coming to them, these switches are open. So the path is through R1. So then the oscillator is seeing a 270K uh, plus the whatever the resistance of the switch is. So low, high, same thing here. This is closed, but one of these will be open, uh, the B. And in that case, 
the resistance is this resistor in parallel with this. And that works out to be about 135k plus whatever the switch was, which is going to be minor compared to the resistors. And the next one would be this one is uh, connected this through here. So these two are in parallel. Uh, that's a 62k. So you get about 50k uh, resistance. And the last case is this and this are both high. That outputs a 1, but it's knotted. So this uh, switch is now open. So you have R2 plus all of these in parallel. And that works out to be roughly um, 662K plus, as I said, the resistance of the switches. So that's how it works, or it's supposed to work. So it's a neat little design. And now we'll get down to hooking it up. And it's time to build a kit. It's box 16, 16 music box. And it has a whole bunch of different sounds it'll make, hopefully. And I've already laid out all the parts because this little kit was scattered throughout the drawer. And I wanted to make sure everything was there and also to speed up the video. So I'll start with the small stuff. With the diodes, So this is turn. That just leaves. Let's see. Can't be far enough away from Not going to watch and that's a one can. Okay, good. 
and now the Lord. I'm just going to use my extra hand. That. Get one piece of solder. I'm going to crank up the temperature on the iron a tiny bit. Okay, okay, speaking. I'm going to turn it here. I'm going to put my solder on this. It'll go through easy. Yeah, as long as it works, you're right Okay. I have to use it for the needs on first. That's number, that's number four. Number five is not connected. Number six is connected. I'll have to check that one. And number seven I've got. And then eight and nine. Okay, that's right there. That's right there. Okay. So it goes in here. And okay. Put one more gone. Not in. Did I'm sorry. Never mind. And. There you go. That's good. That's good. Get that off. Okay. That's not pretty. Okay. Where are the other parts? I'm going to put the transistor stick off. So now, I'll put it just in the last. Let's go ahead and put the in. And then cut up the power. And put it on positive there, positive there. If you buy one of these kits, they can give you, I think, two or three different versions of it. They're basically on AliExpress. And uh, the next part, a little capacitor. Seems like you forgot about it when you designed the thing. So it's one of the boards, or whatever, which actually has a spot for the capacitor to go in. Once I just get that tag across the power, they'll pop it in. So, next, let's do that for it. And the bridge. Okay, the bridge didn't work. Over the other. I'm using this as a leaf. Just take it, bend it, bend it more, bend it all the way around, and then put it in there. There you go. And turn it up on the side. You didn't want to do that. So, thanks for the path. There it is. It's nice and up. Here it's our brick. The homemade flux. And I probably should have wires at the same time. I washed the board and I had to replace the socket here. Uh, it was actually defective. And it works intermittently. I'll play a few of the sounds. <laughs> 